Hey, what is up y'all? Anthony here with another video. I'm so excited to be here, man. Um, a lot of y'all probably wondering where I went and where I've been and I've been here, bro. It's just that I just haven't had a consistent inventory to really make a video. Like it seems like th as quickly as things come in, it sells, you know what I mean? I haven't had like enough things to really make like a crazy video, but this is just one of those days, man, where I have a bunch of inventory, bunch of really nice inventory, and I have enough to really make a really enjoyable video. Um, just tons of awesome pieces today, man. So yeah, <laughs> I've been here, man. It's just, I just haven't had a consistent inventory to make a video. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So first thing we got here is the M1943. I actually got this at a garage sale, which I never find old stuff at a garage sale. I've heard people that have found like crazy shit at garage sales, like like 1930s salt and pepper double V's and stuff like that, man. Not me, man. I've never found anything that crazy at a garage sale. I have found like a bunch of single stitch tees, but the reason why I know it's an M1943 is this would have had the date in it, which would have been 1943. And then um yeah i've just never seen anything like this i didn't know what it was when i picked it but i knew it was like really old um way older than the average like m65 um so yeah we're, we're starting off light though man I'm gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna get to some crazy crazy shit just hold your horses but this is just some cool pieces i've i've picked up over the you know past few months and uh wanted to show off man so here's another like really strange nice piece man um it's a sears like anorak like a sears like windbreaker anorak and what really made this piece for me was the um the chain zip on the um the little pocket right here so it's just like a really cool it's not like a rain poncho it's just like a lightweight windbreaker um really great condition too you can see the tag here i'll show you off um on the on the sears outerwear tag get a full thing of this definitely some fits you could throw with this man just a really cool piece nice like yellow color i'm sure that they drop these in like so much different colors but yeah um this just came out of a bin so another thing i've been really loving things that i've been picking up man is these jackets man i just love these man i need to probably personal a couple of them but uh this is like a deep pocket uh like one of those I don't really know what you'd even call these coach jackets maybe but uh yeah as you can see they have deep pockets this one's in like tremendous condition has this really nice burgundy liner in it i've never seen anyone with liner in it it's another sears product sears was just had just experimenting bro really nice garments man washing instructions right there um also if i could zip this up real quick show y'all a few more details of this so yeah um that was really cool and it also has the uh chin strap on it which again just makes this piece man talon zip all that just an amazing simple like just looks classy man i love this piece man 60s jackets man i got another one that's even older um again like another little chin strap um this one again is another sears oakbrook sportswear perma pressed on the older talon zipper this one's probably like early 60s 50s and i've never ever seen one with like a plaid interior never seen that it's like a sport coat but it's like a casual sports coat really nice just lightweight jacket so where i got this jacket i also got this cardigan um and it's not a mohair but man if this was a mohair this would probably be worth what three hundred dollars maybe um i'm guessing that it is 60s like early 60s so that's what i believe this piece is but really nice just stripes on this one never seen anything like it man um so oh not not that was the crazy pieces yet <laughs> i got got another cool little odds and ends here another uh really cool thing man that i picked up at the bins um wyoming area warriors um i think this is a bowling bag you can correct me if i'm wrong 
but the guy used it for luggage for a very long time. I think the last, uh, what do you call it? Plane ticket said 1989 on it, but yeah, just has that Wyoming area warriors hit on it. And then just a little thing, I guess you'd put your name and whatever other information. And, uh, it's, it's kind of rotted as you could kind of hear. But this was just co too cool of a hit right here for me to not pick this up. Has a lot of wear and is slightly destroyed. But I, I do believe it's like late 60s, early 70s still. Even though this, that font looks a lot older just due to the zipper. Um, but yeah, really cool, cool looking bag, man. Um, so now, guys, the Big E market, if y'all know, has really, really tanked. Um, it's got to the point where most Big E's are worth just about as much as Red Lines, man. It's insane. Like, uh, the 1966 models are, like, worth, like, probably, like, 300 in, like, a good size. And it's, like, Red Lines in the same size is worth about 300 You know what I mean? It's, like, it doesn't make any sense. You know, the market has just kind of hit a low. So, um, I've sold off a lot of my, well, only two pairs, really, for a loss. But I only lost maybe, like, 40 bucks on both pairs, but, uh, I, I'm keeping, I'm keeping one pair just in case it goes back up, which I do believe it will go back up just cause there's no way you could compare the value of big E's to red lines and equalize that. You know what I mean? It's just, I feel like for the moment, just cause it might be the summer. Maybe this is a common thing. Like I said, I'm kind of new to, I wouldn't really call it investing. Um, but at the time when I bought them, they were worth more than what I bought them. If that makes sense. Um, but still, I do invest in uh, Big E's, and I actually did buy a pair, like, recently, the last pair I bought, well, second to last pair I bought, I made money on. So it's like, I don't, the market's, like, all over the place with Big E's right now. I just wouldn't touch it unless you're, like I said, you could get a good deal, because even now, it's like, no one's buying them. It's not really the problem that they're, like, lowly, um, like, low, uh, you know, value. It's just that no one's buying them. Like, you'll see listings for 300 you know, all day long, 300, 400, 500 dollars, and then hidden rivets are in the thousands, but no one's buying it. You know what I mean? No one is buying it. So that's really the issue. Um, and if you do put them up for auction, they're not going to bid up to what you want them to bid up to. So with all that being said, this is a recent piece I got. Really couldn't pass these up. Um, this was a pickup piece, a uh, plaid pair of biggies. These are like one of the last pairs of biggies that they made. I've been doing pretty well with the flare biggies, but just the regular ones are just, like I said, it just tanked, man. It, the market just completely tanked. Um, I didn't even notice that writing right there. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, as you can see, 1973. So past the era for Big E. But still, pretty cool. And a big size, too, like 36, 32 or something. Um, yeah, just a cool pair of Big E's. Uh, not as valuable as any, like, the regular jeans, but those are still always good to, you know, pick up. Uh, actually, don't want to show that yet. So, I've been picking up a ton of 60s sweats, man. 60s sweats have been on the rise, though. So, it seems like in the vintage market, it's like when one thing goes down, another thing goes up. And I say there's only really, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, there's like the cartoon tees, the movie tees, the hype tees, and in true vintage, it's biggies and sweatshirts. That's literally things that like have a concrete value. Like you could place a value on it. Like you could put it up for 99 cent bid and it will always get bid up to what it's worth. You know what I mean? Um, but anything else is kind of like, like I said, people are going to buy because they like it. That's why you see such a price difference in certain pieces. Um, and 60 sweatshirts man i swear they i feel like they've just been on the rise man i've been i've been churning those out man i'm telling you but this is probably the most amount of cool sweatshirts i'll have in my inventory at once um so i thought like i said show them off man so this is what i've been doing so first sweatshirt we got here is nice old english gigantic size mu sigma beta 60 sweatshirt um as you can see the little piling again man if you've ever held a 60 sweatshirt which i recommend anyone anyone to at least buy one 60 sweat man and you will be hooked because these feel like nothing you'll ever feel man it's it's just a different feeling man 
they're like super soft super nice um and this one is probably like it's concrete 60s too move up my chair because it has the um the long hem on the bottom as you can see also has like a nice gusset right there um someone actually taught me that word on youtube i didn't even know what these were called i was calling it like triangular pit thing but someone said gusset and i was like oh but yeah man it is cut off which lowers the value a little bit but like i said this thing is huge i think it's like a 24 by 26 or something um also like i said nice flock print nice seal very nice sweatshirt um someone local actually pulled this one this is really cool um little fraternity u of w sweatshirt doesn't have the long hem at the bottom but does have the overlock stitching all over it so you can see on the little sleeve and everything and it's also on a one of the sexiest tags ever made velvet sheen as you can see lettered sportswear size large um and this one kind of has a cool design on it with the dude really call that a dude but the the alcoholic person <laughs> chugging beer um so yeah nice color really nice sweat man so man let's get deeper into this so another sweatshirt i got man so these are not uh no there's only one short sleeve left i gotta show you but here's another just a nice sweat man no flaws really on this at all like no stains no holes just a really nice regular 60 sweatshirt missouri university you know pretty damn small like 19 by 23 or something but still worth it man with that so sexy overlock stitch on the sleeves long hems long sleeves everything man or long cuffs i mean nice hit on the front um doesn't actually have that piling but everything else really tells me or indicates that this is like a a 60s sweatshirt um like i said i mean you can look at the sleeves and pretty much tell uh long hem at the bottom really nice sweat so let's move deeper man so this is where we're starting to get into some crazy shit so this sweatshirt actually a big size so and it has the long hem at the bottom See the sleeves, long sleeve or long cuffs. Has a couple holes in it, has a couple repairs. But I just love the contrasting on the sweatshirt. This is probably like one of the best contrasting uh, sweatshirts I've seen. Um, and just look at that seal, man. That seal is so ornate. Look at that seal. Has like a crown across the, uh, the scale, books. Oh, man, that seal is intricate, man. And just the old, I can't get enough of that old English, man. And the arc, it's just everything I like. Um, I'm probably going to wear this till I sell it, to be honest. Also has like the two-tone collar, man. They just, again, man, just put so much effort into these, man, it seems like. Uh, you can see on the inside, again, just really nice piling. Just overall, just an extremely solid sweat. Um, but yeah. But I'd actually value this one probably higher, unironically, than the other one just because it has an actual college on it. I feel like the fraternity ones are actually not as good. Like, the people don't like to wear fraternities because they're not in the fraternity or something. I don't, I don't really know. But uh, I don't really care. I mean, if someone wants to smoke, wants to tell me I'm not in a fraternity, then come up to me, you know? Doesn't matter, man. So really cool sweat. Also has uh, overlock stitching, all that. So nice sweat. Um, so this one I've already actually showed off, but I actually found something uh, in the sweatshirt that I uh, didn't notice before. Um, I got this one. This was not in my uh, 60 sweatshirt buying hustle. This was like a while ago. It's what I bought a while ago. Uh, 60s uh, Hanes uh, windshield outside the personal uh, bought off of someone, uh, and you like I said, you've seen this sweat before. Really nice sweat. Again, I'll show it off again for all the newbies here. But yeah, just really, really nice old English. This is like it's like a different font than all the other ones. It's like this 
just royal looking old age. I don't know how to explain it. You know what I mean? Kind of, it's like, it's like a different style of old English. Just like, like look at that E, man. Sheesh. Yeah, but I've already showed y'all this. You know, on the uh, Haynes Breeze Shield XL, extremely, I think it's the largest sweat I have right now. Um, but man, one day, man, I see a smudge on this sweatshirt, man. And I'm like, what is this, bro? I turn it inside out. Y'all ain't gonna believe this, man. It's just my, my luck, man. Y'all about to see, man. Y'all about to see. <laughs> it has like numbers on the inside bro <laughs> but i don't think anyone could really wear this like um inside out because it has the tag you know what i'm saying so it makes me think whoever was in this fraternity probably like put this inside out to plays athletics like it was probably in intramurals or something so that's like really cool man 77 man probably an old lineman no i don't know <laughs> could be really anything but it's not like paint it's not i mean it's having a hard time cracking all the way off so i think it's some sort of print man if it didn't have the tag 100 percent, i'd wear this inside out but man i've never seen anything like that in my entire life i've seen uh if you guys know who jersey's dad is on instagram i saw him have a reverse weave that had a uh an inside hit on it it was like the same hit that was on the um that was on the outside on the inside but i've never seen any like i've never seen a sweat this old have an inside hit man it's just really interesting like i've never again never seen anything like it so man let's get into some some crazier shit man let's let, let's let's level it up a notch so again man this is this is just a sweatshirt filled video i don't really have much big ease for you as i said Biggie market has taken a shit, but we can still buy and sell other things. So this is the next um, find I got from the depths of the internet, man. Uh, 80s Russell double face, man. And that is what the Japanese people look for, man. This like just it has all the buzzwords on it, man. Look at that. Alumni, varsity, gym. Like, what is this? What school did this guy play for? <laughs> but, uh, it's a double face and it looks gigantic, but it's a medium. Show you all this right now. It's a medium. Um, and I paid like dirt for this, man. I paid dirt for this. Like the guy did not know it was double face. And the only way I knew it was double face was when he showed off a tag right here. And I saw the gray lining inside, and I like I just knew it looked familiar. But it also has a back hit. MMA, bro. I was gonna personal this, man. It is literally, if you've ever had a double face, man, it is, again, this is my first double face, so I didn't really know. But it is literally the most comfortable thing you'll ever put on. It is literally a pillow, a bed, a mattress, all into one, man. It is so, so, so soft, man. Um... But yeah, this MMA hit made it, man. This is so cool, man. Never again, never seen anything like it with that back hit. This is, I've seen Russell double faces go for bread, but this is 100% probably the coolest one I've ever seen. Um, I mean, even if I, you know, if I was, you know, saw this on eBay, I mean, shit, I'd probably throw an offer on it, man. If he knew it was a double face, you know, it'd probably offer what they're like worth. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's crazy, man. I love this sweatshirt, man. Um, I might hate myself for selling that, but hey, man, I, I, I'm not in MMA. That's one of those things like I can wear fraternity sweatshirts. So I guess it's really to each his own, I guess. But I did wear this out in public, man. And I kept like looking over my shoulder, man. I was like, someone's going to say like, oh, bro, you do MMA? And I'm going to have to explain like, nah, it's just an old hoodie, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, it's just it's just a little weird because it's like on the back and it's like people probably it's, it's gigantic. So it's, yeah, you know, in Japan, they could probably get away with it. But here, I don't know, man. It's Maybe I got to get used to it, whatever, but whatever. Still an extremely cool. That that front end is just, just made it, bro. That uh, that makes the whole sweatshirt, man. That thing is crazy. If you ever want to remove it, you could probably remove it somehow. But 
just just insane so here man we got some even more crazy than that and this is the last item i want to show y'all uh it's something i got in the mail today um and i am extremely stoked extremely excited to have this piece man um and i'll show it off right now and uh actually i'll explain everything but it's just a blank dirty sweatshirt but when you see the tag i mean and you could probably already tell by the the <laughs> design of it you already know what it is you know what i'm saying if you've been around my videos for a while but you can see it is pretty damn thrashed and destroyed um even the uh sleeve here i'll show you it's pretty destroyed but uh reveal that tag man early 70s reverse weave man or at least that's what popular opinion says man i don't know i feel like this tag because this is the oldest one that classifies 70s right but i feel like it could be older than that man i feel like it could be like late 60s early 70s with these man because i've seen the newer one color tags um dated like you know how they have like the thing in the back it's like whatever osu state property you know so, you know date 1974 i've seen 1974 on like not even a striped you know striped one color tag. this is a striped one color tag as you can see on the bot has that like golden stripe i've seen 1974 on ones that aren't even striped and there's a red striped one and the gold striped one's the oldest um and then they go i think goes like red green and then blue or something i don't know i don't know the exact order but yeah uh it's like two-tone extremely nice man but i think i'm gonna get this part of it repaired uh just because it is pretty thrashed up man i don't really like that i don't think any buyers would really think that looks nice um especially because i feel like a lot of the buyers when they buy stuff like this they're looking more for condition than uh anything else so i think i might take this to the sewing place see what they'll charge me on just getting this sleeve taken care of hopefully they're not like well we gotta replace the whole sleeve but i doubt it man they always get me right uh again just the feel of this man way softer than like the average reverse weave man um let me peek inside see if there's any any <laughs> now like now that i've seen that like i just discovered that today but yeah it's not looking like it but yeah if it had an inside hit that would just be absolutely insane but i haggled with this guy for so long on this thing man it was literally throughout the day i mean he accidentally facetimed me one time it was it was a hard haggle man but i think i still got it for a pretty good price um and shouts out to him, man. I'm probably not going to make a whole, you know, bag of money on this. But I think that uh, he left a little bit of meat on the bone for me. Especially after I get it repaired. So, you know, I, I also got to put a lot of work into it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I mean, shouts out to that guy, man. Super, super rare sweatshirt. Um, again, you can see all those stains. There's nothing I can really do about that. I'm no way in hell throwing this in the wash um, just because I have a fear. It's so soft and so fragile. I feel like it might fall apart. Um, yeah. And the most we could do is just get it better constructed. But yeah, man, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, like I said, just a lot of really nice old sweatshirts. Um, that's something that I've just been kind of obsessed with lately. Uh, haven't really been doing the whole Big E thing. And I actually decided, if y'all could see, to keep my rivets. I'm not even trying to sell them anymore. Just because, like I said, the market has just taken a deep dive. And I just don't have any interest in selling it. And honestly, I'd probably hate myself if I sold them. Because I keep looking at, you know, different Big E's. See if any are underpriced. But it's like, what even is the value of Big E's? You know what I'm saying anymore? Um, but yeah, I just decided to take them offline. They're not really for sale anymore. Because, again, it's just like a unicorn size. I mean... How do you even value this? You know what I'm saying? So decided to keep them for myself. They fit me really nice. Um, and I wear them all the time. So like I said, yeah, I'd, I'd probably hate myself if I sold them, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's the conclusion of this video. And uh, like always, if you see any pieces you like in this video, I'll uh, link my Instagram here. Um, 
And yeah, just shop with me, man. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's it for this video, man. Thanks for watching. <laughs>